The pump can be started or stopped via an external dry contact or a relay that is connected to terminals 11 and 12, such as a thermostat or end switch from a valve or boiler. When the contact is open, the pump will display stop and stop running, and then will start running at the last set point it was set for when the contact was closed. The pump will come with a jumper installed in terminal 11 and 12 for continuous operation. The pump has a built-in external speed control via a 0 to 10 volt signal. Terminal 7 and 8 is where the signal is connected, and the terminals are labeled S, positive and negative, for speed. When a voltage input is detected, the pump switches to constant curve control mode automatically, and on the user interface, the fixed speed symbol will start to flash on and off, indicating that the pump is being externally controlled. The pump is displaying off because the voltage input is below 1.2 VDC. Now the pump is running at minimum speed because the voltage input is above 1.5 VDC. In the upper right hand corner there is a picture of a DC voltage calibrator and it is being used to simulate the 0 to 10 volt signal. The built-in fault signal relay is a normally open relay that will close when a red light status is displayed. The relay's voltage rating is up to 230 VAC with a max current of 2 amps. This connection is to signal an external device that the pump has failed and stopped running. The EcoCirc XL has sensorless technology but can be equipped to use a differential pressure sensor for better system accuracy. There is a 4 to 20 milliamp connection available for a differential pressure sensor. There are two fixed ranges for the differential pressure sensor, 0 to 15 PSID and 0 to 30 PSID. The sensor will be connected at terminals 9 and 10. The recommended use of an external differential pressure sensor is to satisfy the pressure loss of a critical loop. The pump will source 15 volts DC through terminals 9 and 10. The differential pressure sensor should be a two-wire sensor where the sensor is powered by the same two signal wires. With the differential pressure sensor installed in the piping system and properly connected to terminals 9 and 10, the pump will detect the sensor and display PRES to set up the sensor. When PRES is displayed, press the parameter button to access the setup menu and confirm the range of the differential pressure sensor, D1 equals 0 to 15 PSID and D2 equals 0 to 30 PSID. The pump will run through the startup sequence and automatically start working in constant pressure mode. The head parameter will flash, indicating that the pump will determine the proper speed based on the reading from the sensor. The pump is currently displaying a near zero differential head set point because the pump is receiving approximately 4 milliamps. The external temperature sensor is connected to terminals 13 and 14. The sensor is a 1000 ohm PTC, which needs to be ordered from Bell & Gossett. The external temperature sensor is set up through an external device which is connected to the pump via the RS-485 connection or the wireless module. Once the pump is set up for a constant temperature control mode, the user interface will flash the fixed speed control mode symbol, indicating that the pump's speed will vary based on temperature. Once the communication cable is connected in terminals 15, 16, and 17 for both pumps, the user will only need to configure the master or lead pump. The twin pump submenu for this configuration is available at each power on when SING for a single pump is displayed. Enter the twin pump submenu by pressing the down arrow. The first twin pump setting is TUSL, which is twin slave, and then another down press will display TUNA, which is twin master. Press the parameter button to select TUNA for Twin Master. Once the master pump is selected, the second pump in back will automatically be programmed as the slave pump. Immediately the slave pump will go into standby mode and the remote light is lit because the slave pump is now being controlled by the master pump. Once the Twin Master is selected, the next menu setting will be the Twin Pump Control Modes, BCUP for backup operation. ALTE for alternating operation, PARA for parallel operation, and FORC for forced parallel operation. 
BCUP is the factory default control mode for twin pump operation. Pressing the up button, the user can change the twin pump control mode. Press the parameter button to select the mode. STBY, for standby operation, will be displayed on either the master or slave depending upon the twin pump control mode. The master pump is in standby mode because the master is waiting for the slave to start pumping. When the slave pump starts up, the master pump starts up also. Both will run at the same set point because they are both in forced parallel mode. Note that the slave pump has the remote light on because it is being controlled by the master pump. Power off the pump and open the terminal box by removing the cover. Plug the flat cable into the module connector and then plug the other end into the terminal box. Position the flat cable underneath the wireless module, align the module's two holes with the positioning posts, and then snap the module in place. When the module is connected, the secondary RS-485 channel becomes active and is ready for connection to an external device when twin pump operation is being used. Close the terminal box. Switch the pump on and wait for the pump to display CONN for communication. When the pump displays CONN, press the parameter button to enter the menu. The pump will display BAUD to indicate that the menu is active. To enter the module setting parameter in the menu, press the up arrow until NODU module is displayed. When NODU is displayed, press the parameter button to enter the module section. NONE will be displayed, meaning the pump will not activate the module connection. Press the up button once to signify a change and NONE will start to flash. Press the up button again and then BYFI will be displayed on the pump. Press the parameter button to select the wireless module and now the pump will know which module to activate. Press the control mode button to go back to the CONN setting menu and then press the control mode button one more time to go back to the pump startup. The remote light will begin to flash indicating that the pump can be remotely controlled via the wireless module. View your open wireless network. Select the wireless SSID hotspot that begins with Xylem Eco XL. The last eight characters will correspond to the first line, S, on the label on the side of the pump. Once the wireless hotspot is selected, the password to enter the hotspot is Xylem, followed by the eight character password, P, on the label on the side of the pump. Once the password is entered, the external device is connected to the wireless hotspot. The user can now enter the pump setting by opening an internet browser and typing 192.168.1.10 into the address bar. The page shown is the HMI main, which has all the same functions as the HMI display on the pump, from the three standard control mode setting to the pump parameters. The pump on off button will show how quickly the pump will react to the changes made on the internet browser. Now the control mode will be changed. The HMI status tab will display information about the temperatures of the fluid and drive components. Advanced status will display information about the drive serial number and firmware, and this tab will show the pump's twin pump operation settings and pressure sensor range. In the advanced control section, the user can set the pump into a temperature control mode and into a twin pump operation mode. The pump's communication settings can be changed during the initial power-up. 
When CONN communication is displayed, the user must press the parameter button quickly to enter the menu. The first setting displayed is the baud rate, BAUD. Factory default is 9.6. Press the up button once and then the 9.6 value will begin to flash to indicate that the value can be changed. By pressing the up button the values will increase and the down button will decrease the values. The available values are 4.8, 9.6, 14.4, 19.2, 21.5, 56, and 57.6. Press the parameter button to select the value. Once the selected value is saved, the user can then press the control mode button to go back to the communication menu. Press the up button again and the next communication setting is the BMS protocol, PROT. The pump has two built-in protocols, Modbus and BACnet. Modbus is the factory default BMS. Press the parameter button to enter the protocol menu. NOD stands for Modbus and BAC stands for BACnet. Press the parameter button to select the value and then press the control mode button to go back to the communication menu. Press the up button again and the next communication setting is the slave device address. Press the parameter button to enter the menu. The available address range from Modbus is from 1 to 255 and BACnet is from 0 to 127. The factory default address is 1. Press the parameter button to select the value and then press the control mode button to go back to the communication menu. Press the up button again and the next communication setting is the module, NODU. There are different settings for the module communication. NONE for no module additional module. BYFI for wireless module installed. 485 for RS-485 module installed. With either the wireless or the RS-485 module installed, the secondary RS-485 channel will be activated. None is the factory default setting. Now press the control mode button to go back to the menu and then the pump will start up.